Next, I would like to call Dr. Um, Ahmed Ibrahim. Ahmed Ibrahim is a vitreoretinal consultant in Maghrabi um, Eye Center, Prince Sultan Street. Dr. Ibrahim will talk about the uh, dislocated eye oil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank the board committee for this very nice uh, meeting to invite me for this lecture. Today we will speak about the intraocular lens dislocation. Intraocular lens dislocation has been uh, reported to occur in uh, 0 0.2 to 3% of the patients after cataract surgery. The incidence may be increasing because of widespread of FACO in which the IOL can be implanted on the anterior capsule. What types of IOL dislocation? Partially dislocated, complete dislocation. In the back dislocation, which is common, but occur late, uh, out of the back dislocation, less common, and occur early. And the whole compartment dislocation, which in dislocation of the IOL capsular tension ring, and the whole bag. What is the anatomic site for dislocation? Typically inferior, however, anterior dislocation into the anterior chamber and superior dislocation can be seen. Predisposing factors for uh, dislocated IOL. In the bag, IOL dislocation is occurs late, maybe years after cataract surgery. Uh, Pseudoxophilation is the most common cause, is uh, almost 50% of the cases. Previous vitrectomy, 20%, uveitis, 2 to 15%. Trauma 5% and retinitis pigmentosa. The main causes are uh, weak zinules and capsular fibrosis. Out of the back dislocation, it occurs early uh, and less common than in the back dislocation. Typically, follow uh, failure of insertion of IOL in the bag due to capsular uh, tear and secondary IOL insertion. Uh, this is almost in uh, complicated cataract surgery. What's the complications of partial dislocation? Visual symptoms, blurred vision, uh, perception of IOL edge, and diplopia. Uh, complete dislocation, posterior and very rare anterior dislocation, uh, pigment dispersion, anterior uveitis, and cystoid macular edema. Complications of complete dislocation, usually uh, posterior dislocation and most commonly inferior. Uh, blurred vision, diplopia, vitreous hemorrhage, retinal detachment, retinal trauma, especially in vitrectomized eyes. Uh, spontaneous reposition, which is very rare. Dislocation of IOL with capsular tension ring and the whole bag. This is what we call the whole compartment dislocation. This is the same complications of uh, total posterior dislocation. The capsular tension ring was found to provide the stabilization for the capsular bag and the IOL during and after cataract surgery, especially in cases of uh, weak zonules. The most common cases for capsular tension ring use is uh, pseudoxophiliation cases. That's why some studies advised for routine use of capsular tension ring in pseudoxophiliation cases. Uh, regardless of stability of the zonules, it's common and occurs late, especially if the zonules is very weak. What's our management for IOL dislocation? There is old ways for management, which I think nobody is following this nowadays, but we must, to, we will enumerate it. Number one, observation, especially if the patient has no or mild acceptable visual symptoms. Uh, if the IOL is stable, not freely mobile, so the risk of retinal complications is very low. Uh, patient can tolerate contact lens for aphakia. The only advantage for this is no surgical interference, uh, but there is a disadvantage, is this still risk of retinal complications, contact lens complications, late contact lens intolerance. Number two, implantation of second IOL without removing of the dislocated IOL. The only advantage also is correction of aphakia and visual symptoms. This advantage, risk of complication still remains. Risk of uh, dislocation of the secondary IOL again. Also more challenge uh, surgery for removal of the IOL or for any retinal complication. Number three, which is uh, I think almost all of retina specialists doing this, sparse plan of vitrectomy. It's, uh, 20 or 23 gauge. We will do core vitrectomy plus or minus separation of the posterior hyaloid and shaving of the vitreous base to release the haptic, uh, but try always to avoid retinal tears and dialysis. We will grip the distal haptic with the forceps, then bring the proximal one onto into the anterior chamber. 
then we will use a second instrument, almost the live pipe, and push the optic, then bring the whole IOL inside the anterior chamber so we can remove easily. Don't use the aspiration uh, to lift the IOL because very high risk to fall on the retina. The use of perfluorocarbon liquid, there is a debate for this. It's expensive, no big advantage, and there is a risk of complications of retained PFCL at the vitreous base, but some of the surgeons prefer to use the PFCL to uh, protect the retina from trauma if the IOL fall again or like this. What's the advantage for uh, parse plan of vitrectomy? Avoid retinal complications and improve visual outcome. This advantage, retinal detachment was commonly from 3 to 14 percent, but nowadays with the advancement of the vitrectomy machines and the high rate cutting rate and like this, there is, is I, I think it's very, very rare to happen. And cystoid macular edema, one of the complications after vitrectomy. What we will do after vitrectomy and the removal of the dislocated IOL? The options, number one is to place the IOL in the sulcus if there is adequate support in the anterior capsule, but still there is risk of recurrent dislocation. If there, if there is no or inadequate capsular support, we will, there is many options. Number one, to put the regular anterior chamber IOL, but there is a risk of its complication. It's well known, uveitis, glaucoma, and coronary decompensation. Iris fixating IOL, artisan, you can put it anterior or posterior uh, in the posterior chamber, posterior fixating. And clear fixation IOL, the last one is the glued IOL. Let us to see this. In this video, there is a whole compartment dislocation, the lens with uh, capsular tension ring and the whole bag, this is 20 gauge. Now, first of all, we clean the uh, anterior vitreous. As you see, the lens is floating here. Now we are making core vitrectomy and also shaving for the vitreous base because the lens is stuck always in the periphery. If the, if the lens is not near or very near the periphery, better no, not to do the shaving to the vitreous base maybe it will carry a risk of complications. Now we will grip the lens from the distal haptic. Not very carefully. Now we will bring it anterior and try to push it in the anterior chamber with the second instrument. Now we will open the anterior chamber to remove the lens. I open a slightly big incision because the lens is big with the capsular tension ring and like this, so I can remove it easily. As we see, this is the whole compartment. There is a IOL with the CTR and the bag, hold the bag, as we'll see now.
then I will uh, implant anterior chamber artisan. This is my favorable lens. S sometimes anterior, sometimes retrofixating posterior artisan, according to the cornea of the patient and according to the patient. It's more safe in the anterior chamber. Then we will have a, a look for the peripheral retina. We will clean if there is a viscoelastic. This is also another case with a dislocated IOL in a very high myo patient. It's this 23 gauge that we see here. The lens is totally stuck to the periphery near the aura. I did vitrectomy all around and it's still stuck. There is one haptic stuck at the back of the eyelid, I think. Now, I must to clip from this side and I, as we will see, the anterior haptic is stuck at the back of the iris. I'm trying to remove. Now I try to bring it in the anterior chamber. Now we bring it out already. Now I am examining the peripheral retina, very cautious because this area, the lens was stuck here. I search it for any small hole, anything. Now I will uh, implant artisan again, but it will be posterior artisan, retrofixating. it fixed already and then I will take sutures and in this case I prefer to do 360 uh, uh, endo laser because I was afraid if there is some small holes or like this because the stuck the IOL in the periphery also I left the case in on air I made air fluid exchange what's our home message from this uh, try to always be sure before IOL implantation that there is a good and adequate capsular support. Uh, better to implant on the anterior capsule if the bag is not uh, stable or if uh, there is any tear in the bag. Uh, better to implant anterior chamber IOL, artisan, iris fixating or glued IOL than to have early or late dislocated IOL. Thank you.